Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today we are going to be doing a review video, which I'm super excited about because it's just been a little minute since we've done a review video. And so I have a new product today that I am trying out. I have not opened it or anything. It just arrived in the mail today. So I thought, what better day than to do a review video for you guys. The product that I'm talking about today is called Farmhouse Paints. And I actually hadn't even heard of it until just recently. And they just sent me um, a six ounce jar today. I'm super excited to give it a try. We're gonna do it on a practice board like we always do. And then um, because they don't have a lot here, they can make two sizes. They have the six ounce and the quart. Since they sent me the six ounce, this is enough for a small project. Right now I don't have anything that's super small in my shop. Everything I have is large size. So we're just gonna use it on a practice board today. And then once I get in a small piece, I'll try it out on that too. And then I will throw that video up on here as well. So they sent me this really beautiful color, indigo. They didn't ask what I wanted, they just sent it to me. And this is a really cool color. It's a very pretty gray, which grays are in right now. So can't wait to get this on a board and see how it does. So just a little bit about farmhouse paints. As I mentioned, they come in two sizes. They have 30, I think it's 34 colors. Um, and then it's, it's a no wax, no seal, one step paint it says. And they gave me a little brochure. So we are going to check it out. So basically what it says is the farmhouse paint is next generation. Uh, furniture paint in an advanced water-based formula making it unique to any other brand. Our original single step process does not require any prep. Eh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Wax or top coat since it's extremely durable on its own. You can use on almost any surface. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna tell you about the no prep comment and why I turned my nose up at that. I've been doing this for going on six years and here's the thing I'm gonna tell you. There is no such thing as no prep. If you want the ultimately best finish in your project, then you're going to prep your piece. Um, every piece should be cleaned. That's considered prep. Every piece does not necessarily need to be sanded. It does not necessarily need to be primed. You take those on a case by case basis. Here's a couple rules of thumb. Clean every piece, every time. Um, there's things like furniture polishes, other cleaning chemicals um, that sit on that piece over the years. Um, that you definitely want to get off. Even people handling it with their hands, the oil from their hands, clean that piece prior to painting it or you're going to have adhesion issues. So when companies say no prep, not exactly. Just maybe a little less prep than other paints. There's things where um, when you need to prime, and that's a big question, when do I need to prime? Well, you know, I always tell people if you've got a, a piece of furniture, that, and it's not always these, but mahogany, cherry, those tend to have bleed through. Um, sometimes certain oak pieces will bleed through in a yellow tone. So there are cases when you are going to need to prep your piece even more than just the basic prep. But just keep in mind, if you're just getting started, don't cut that corner. Always, always, always prep that piece. Clean it out, make sure it's ready to be painted, make sure it's wiped down, all that good stuff. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive in and get started on this and get this down on a practice board and see. All right, so I have just opened the jar. This is our color, indigo. It is a really pretty, I would say it's like a medium gray. And so I always use the same brush. This is my Klingon F50. We're gonna use this brush because I always stick with my review videos, the same type of board and the same brush. That way I know that nothing is changing with the tools I'm using. And so if it's something I don't like, I know it's most likely gonna be the paint, not my tools. So um, yeah. I also, just as a tip, I wet my, I store my brushes wet. That's how Klingons are meant to be stored. And so I store mine wet, but if you don't do that and you don't have a Klingon brush, I definitely recommend just having your brush um, dipped in a little bit of water. Just, it always seems to make the paint go on so nice and easy. And so yeah, let's just go ahead and get started. See what this feels like getting this on. So it is a really pretty color. As a matter of fact, my bathroom cabinets in um, one of my bathrooms are like almost this identical color. So it's a really beautiful color. So, so far, as far as the coverage goes, 
I have to say, wow, I am like not even loading my brush up heavily. You can see I literally just have the tips loaded right there. Um, and it's got really nice coverage. One coat and wow. So I'm impressed with that. Um, as far as how it's gliding on, as you can see, I'm going over it a few times. Now this right here where I'm at, this was my first section, and I can tell by the way it feels that I don't want to keep going too terribly much. Te te bleh, can't talk today. Te typically, okay, I couldn't decide if I was saying technically or typically. Goodness, it's Monday. Um, but typically what I do is go over it a few passes just to see how it goes on. Does it start to set up? Does it have any drag? Um, I will say that when I went back over this, probably for the third time, I could feel it. And usually you can feel it. It almost feels like it's getting heavier as you're going through your brush stroke. If you feel that, it's time to stop because what's going to happen is you're working it too much. You're going to go ahead and put brush strokes in there, maybe some drag marks that you don't want. So once you feel that, that heaviness or maybe that little bit of a drag, stop what you're doing because anything that you miss on that first coat, you can pick up on the second coat. So I don't know that this says on there, I don't think it says anything about... No, it doesn't say anything about being a one coat coverage. Some of them do. I just wanted to clarify this does not. What it does say is that you want to wait one to four hours between coats. So it's a little lengthy. Most are about two hours, but you know what? I am kind of a big advocate for don't hurry it. If it says one to four hours, then wait that period of time. If you're more comfortable waiting that longer length of time, uh, maybe you're new and you're just really nervous that you don't want to mess up, um, you know, that, that um, paint job at all, then don't worry about it. Um, what I normally do for me is I will put on a coat and I walk away and I come back to it hours later. Even if recoat time is an hour, I don't do things in a hurry just because it never works out well when you do things in a hurry. So one to four hour recoat time. So we're going to go ahead and wrap up our brush right now. I'm going to let this dry. I do want to show you what it looks like wet. And I can already tell, to be honest with you, it is already, you, can, you guys can see it's already setting up. That doesn't mean it's dry. It just means it's already setting up um, and, and, and starting to dry. But just because it looks dry, do not go back in that 30 minute time or 15 minutes because it looks dry um, and recoat it. Make sure you pay attention to the labels. So yeah, that is it. We're gonna go ahead, I have to say, the coverage on that guy is really, really good. I mean, that's one coat and I literally see a little tiny area where it's got some peek through, which means on that second coat, it's really gonna pick it up. So yeah, we'll let this sit up and we will come back and apply our second coat. Okay, so we have waited an hour, and for this size board, that's all it is necessary to wait. If I were doing a larger piece, then I would definitely heed towards um, that four hour window. Instead, I would wait. Um, and one of the reasons, if you don't know, and some of you that might just be getting started want you know, want to know, what happens if I recoat too soon? Well, if you're lucky, nothing. But um, most typically what will happen is you'll start to lift off that first coat. So if you go to apply that second coat before the first is dry, you can typically you can lift it off. You can have issues with getting it to lay down nicely. So you just don't want to do that. You want to make sure you give that, that ample dry time in between coats. So we waited the hour for this size, which is more than enough time. Um, it's a beautiful shine, sheen, I should say not a shine, but it's got a nice sheen to it. I would say that um, when I look at this in person, it's in between kind of a matte and a satin. It's not completely satin. So if you like that look, then you definitely would want to put a top coat on it if you wanted it more shiny. But it is a really nice finish. I actually kind of like this finish. It's a very soft finish. Um, I did feel this before I put my gloves back on. It's got a really, really smooth. Um, there's not any ridges in there. There's no real brush strokes, um, no drag marks, nothing like that. So it goes on really nice. And the coverage for coat number one, pretty impressive. I have a small area at the top here and that could have just been the way I was putting it on, but wow. So I would say that two coats and we're gonna cover this piece. So it's kind of nice. Now it is a darker color and darker colors do tend to cover better 
as well. I would be interested to see how, you know, maybe some of their lighter colors fare. Usually the lighter colors, you're going to be three, even four coats sometimes on whites. So just keep that in mind. And it also depends on what you're putting it on as well. So, well, let's go ahead and get that second coat on and see how that second coat fares. You know, putting the first coat on sometimes can be really easy um, because you're going on to a nicely fresh prepped surface. Sometimes you have a little, um, you know, it's a little smoother. So typically when you lay down that first coat, now you've got that second coat has something to grab onto. So let's see how that works and we will check it out. All right, so I'm going to unwrap my brush. For those of you that don't know and are maybe wondering what did I do here, and when I'm working on a paint project and I have a short span of time where I'm going to reuse my brush again for the exact same color, I just wrap it up in some cling wrap, you know, and then that way I don't have to wash. So just a little tip if you didn't know. Um, so let's go ahead and get on that second coat and see what we think of the application process. Again, I'm really not going to load up too heavy as you can see. It really, for coverage purposes, doesn't need a whole lot. The second coat is going on really nice. No grab. Um, I feel like it's really smooth and easy to apply. Sometimes I have had certain paints, um, and it depends on the paint, whether if it's a chalk paint, maybe a milk paint. Um, it just depends on the formula you're working with. Sometimes you can have, like I said, a little more challenge or you notice right away that second coat is not going on as smoothly. This one is really particularly easy to apply. I'm going over it several times. I do this for a reason in my videos because I want to see how many times I can make a pass at something before it starts to give me that, that feeling of, okay, you need to stop now. So I would say about three times going over the same area is about the max before you want to stop because then you're going to start to alter how your finish is going to come out. So we're going to leave it at that. Um, it went on very, very well. The coverage is really great. I'm um, going to let this one dry up again for another hour, and then we will come back. We'll talk more about the product. We'll look at the final board and see what we think. So far, really, really like it. All right, you guys, so let's just go ahead and do a quick recap. So this paint is available in two sizes. Um, the price point is pretty competitive, $12 for the six ounce and then um, $32 for the quart size, so that's really nice. I did not have a local retailer near me, so I would definitely have to order online. Make sure you go to their website and check to make sure. Maybe you do have a retailer in your area, so um, they have 32 colors to select from, which is an ample color line. Um, the color that I had today, indigo, was a beautiful medium gray. The coverage was excellent. I would have to say that was like with this color and this brand today was the number one thing that stood out to me was great coverage. So um, I really enjoyed working with it. The application was pretty easy peasy. First coat went on really nice and the second coat um, went on equally as nice. I would say three passes before you want to stop working with it. Um, I worked on with my, my I worked with my Klingon F50 as I usually do. So one thing I like to tell people is your final finish is only going to be as good as the tools that you use. So make sure that you get some good, decent tools to work with, and you'll come out with a beautiful finish in the end. So all in all, this is a really cool paint. I'm excited to try it out on a piece in my shop as soon as I get a small enough piece to work with this six ounce jar. I'm gonna be doing that uh, video for you guys and I'll put it up on my channel. You know, painting with a practice board versus painting with an actual piece of furniture is different. And you know, you can get a really good feel for something that is, you know, 12 inches versus maybe you go to put it on a project and you know it's larger and now you've got bigger areas to work with and so it does make a difference and so I always like to if I like a paint I definitely like to try it on a piece of furniture so stay tuned for that video I will be doing that as soon as I get something in the shop thank you so much for watching today hopefully that was helpful for you guys and give it a try give farmhouse paints a try it's really a cool paint um, thank you for being subscribers. Keep subscribing so you can get all of my videos. And the last thing I want to mention before I let you go is that I do have an ebook that I wrote for you guys. I just put that up on my website about two or three weeks ago and it is available for you. So if you're interested in checking out my tips and tricks for the last five years and my experiences, go to www.bornatabarnboutique.net and hit the ebook in the menu and it will ask you for an email 
once you submit your email, you will get your um, download link for the ebook. Completely free to you guys. I enjoyed writing it and hopefully you enjoy reading it. Again, thank you so much for watching today and I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye-bye.